Hello, my name is Doug Leisure. I wanted to record this video to give you a demonstration of this software uh, that uh, I have given to some churches to use to record their donations as well as their expenses. Now the donation portion of it um, is exactly the same as the donation only software that, uh, that I've given to other churches. And if you are not familiar with that, there is a link in the description below uh, to the video that describes that in, in detail. A few years ago, one of the churches that was using my donation-only software asked me to, uh, to consider adding a, 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 uh, a part to it that would allow them to track their expenses. He said, Doug, um, we're a small church. I do, I do everything. The, the, I record the donations. I pay the, I pay the bills. Your, your software for, for recording the donations and, and producing the year-end receipts just works so simply. Can you please do something like that for me to track the expenses? So I, I added uh, a portion to it to track the expenses. Um, and then I started sharing that with other churches. And that's what I want to show you today is the, the part that tracks the expenses and, and produces a, a, a nice report of, of income and expense. This is my, my new version for 2023. I've enhanced it over the, over the years and I want to show you the, the current version. Okay, so uh, on the expense tab, um, we have the opening balance deposits and, and uh, payments, and we calculate then the current balance. The part down here is where we do the entry, and it's like a check register kind of a kind of a layout. You do your your entry in the the yellow portion only. The blue part is is uh, some other cell formulas and, and things that are, are are needed to help with the report and the and the reconciliation. Uh, this part down here is for the the reconciliation back to the bank statement, and we'll, we'll I'll show that to you here in just a little while. Okay, so let's take a look at how this works. Uh, we would enter, uh, for instance, a check number. If uh, if electricity is uh, is paid automatically, you would enter like an ACH or an EFT in here instead of a check number. If you use debit cards, you might might actually put in the word debit card in here for for some of those payment types. But if you're writing a check, then you would put the check number in here. So the entry is pretty simple: the check number, the date. The next part of it, uh, the, the software gives you the option to record categories only. So the, the telephone expense, gas, rent, electricity would be your category. Or you can actually do category and subcategory. And here's a perfect example of that. We have our telephone, gas, rent, electricity, and water. But all of those are categorized under building maintenance. So we'll have a total for building maintenance as well as then the detail of each of, the, of those items. Same thing uh, for the employee expense. So you might have pastor salary, secretary, um, custodian, and, you want, and, and you'd like to see the employee subtotal. So, so that, that's the idea of the category and subcategory. And then finally you enter either the payment amount or the deposit amount. Okay. Uh, once you do that entry, then we have a, a place over here where we can produce a nice report. Now the report is uh, some information above. So the opening balance, deposits, payments, and the current balance. Down below is the detail. Actually, it's not detail, it's more of the summarization of the income and expense. This is done using a, a standard Excel pivot table. And one of the wonderful things about Excel pivot tables, as you begin entering stuff for the new month, May, it'll just automatically add a new column here and dump the May and put the, the May data or information in there. Same thing as you add new new categories or subcategories, it'll automatically add rows to this. So it's it's just a, a nice little thing that, that Excel does for us. The biggest thing to note on here is that uh, we are we're taking our our uh, our income and putting it as positive numbers we're putting the uh, the expenses as a negative number so that 
even though it says the word grand total down here, this is really your net for the month. I can't, because it's a, a pivot table, I can't really change these words, but this is the net for the month. So you can see that in January, we actually had more money come in than we than we um, spent. Same thing in February. In March, we actually spent more than we had come in. April, we had, uh, we had more come in than we spent. And then this column, Again, it has the word grand total, but this really becomes your year to date. And we can see whether or not we uh, year to date had more money come in or if we spent more than we had come in. This would be the net for the year to date. So that's that's the report. All right, let's jump back here and talk about uh, the entry. It's, it's again, pretty simple for entering. Uh, we're using a, a standard Excel table for, uh, layout here and what's nice about that is when you come down here to the next blank row and just start typing all of the information from above self formatting self formulas just automatically get applied to it so we have some entries here for uh, April but we're missing two so we're gonna go ahead and add those so uh, our last check number was 494 and we actually have a new check that we wrote out 495 would be the check number so as we start typing, notice how everything fills in for us, the format and the self formulas. And that was on um, on April 25. And uh, what happened was uh, one of our Sunday school teachers uh, had to buy some supplies for Sunday school. So the category would be Christian education. And then the subcategory would be Sunday School. And that was a payment of $19.57, so we'll enter that as a payment. Okay, and then the cell formulas will do the things that they need to do um, automatically for the reports. And then we also had, very interestingly, we had some income that was not a donation. So that would be a deposit. All right, and that was on uh, the 28th, April 28th. And uh, what happened was we um, uh, we we play, replaced our, our our tables and chairs with the the new kind of plastic stuff that's nice and lightweight and all the, and really really nice to use. But we had those old tables and chairs that we ended up selling to uh, to one of one of the local organizations that that needed them. So um, we'll call that miscellaneous income. And that was, uh, we sold our, our tables and chairs. And that then was a deposit of $125. Okay. I'll take you uh, in a second over to the, re to the report and we'll see how it automatically adds those. But before I do that, let's take a second and talk about the reconciliation process, trying to match it back to our, our bank statement. So, um, we, uh, we got our, our, our April bank statement and we see that we had a, an opening balance of $10,981.40. Okay, then we have our, our list of all of our deposits and our expenses or our debits. Okay, so um, let's start with the uh, reading down through the, the deposits. And make sure that we have we've recorded all of our deposits as well as recorded the correct the correct amounts. Um, now, if you're using if you're using the option so that our deposits, uh, our do our donations come over automatically, we we expect those to, to balance in, but but we'll still check them out. One of the things we notice on our bank statement is that our last deposit or donation on on uh, March 27th was actually outstanding or missing on the prior statement, but I see it on this one. So the first thing we'll do is we'll take a look at our, our donation. And uh, yeah, it was marked here as yes, it was missing on the prior statement. So here we'll just switch it over to blank or no to say that it's, it's, uh, it's no longer missing because it's on the current statement. And then we'll just check out our other donations to make sure that they're all there and that the 
um, the amounts match what we have in our deposits. A uh, little trick for you. Um, so in this case, all four of these donation amounts are shown as a single deposit on our on our statement, right? Uh, not a problem if you just simply highlight the amounts, the deposit amounts here for that week, and then look down here. Excel has this nice little option where it will automatically summarize those for us. So that that number, 2,363, is what we look at. And yes, we can match that was what was deposited on the, uh, actually it was deposited on the 18th, we received it on the Sunday the 17th, but it was Monday when we did the deposit. But that 2,363 amount, the sum of these these highlighted items, that's what we can match to our, uh, our to our bank statement. Okay, then we notice that our um, our deposit on the 20 on Monday the 25th um, is actually outstanding as is our um, our deposit of the of the, the, the chairs and tables that we sold so we will mark those as missing yes it's missing on our statement okay so we'll just mark those ones and I'm using the little drop down arrow here to select yes they're they're missing okay so now we are identifying those as missing on our bank statement. Next thing we do is go back to our um, to our, our expenses, our, our payments, um, and we make sure that all of those uh, are on the statement. And the first thing we notice is that uh, this one from last last month, the um, the water bill uh, was was ex actually missing on the last the prior statement. Um, but we, we see that it's, it's recorded on this statement. So we remove the missing from there. And then we go to our, our, other, um, our other expenses and we make sure that they're all listed. In fact, we notice that again this month the water bill is not, uh, is not, not listed. So we'll make that outstanding as well. Um, so yes, it's missing. Uh, the other things are there, oh, but not the uh, not the one we just did for Christian for the Christian education. Um, so we'll mark that as as missing. Oh, and I forgot when we did the when we did this check, we also have this other option over here where you can you can say was the receipt provided. So when uh, the Sunday school teacher uh, purchased this and turned it in to us. Um, she turned in a, a receipt um, and we use that then, the receipt, to, to, to cut the check. So, so we, we can say yes, a receipt was provided for that, that particular item. Okay, now that we've um, compared our, our list of deposits and, um, and uh, debits, the, the, uh, the payments, uh, to our uh, to our our, um, our bank statement and we identified which ones are which ones are missing so now we look at this and we see that um, this number here then matches to the penny the ending bank statement eleven thousand four hundred seven dollars and fifty six cents all right so that that just proves that we didn't um, enter some numbers incorrectly or that we forgot to enter some payment or, or deposit so it ma everything matches and we're good all right um, so now that we're kind of done with that let's take a look at the expense report okay so the information was added here to our to our check register but now we need to update the information in the report it's it's a kind of a sad thing about Excel pivot tables they don't automatically refresh themselves you have to give it a command to to do that um, not a problem I've given you I've created my own custom menu the, the top part is all for the donation software but down at the bottom we have a few items related to the expense part of it and the first item here is um, is option 21 
and that's the command that will refresh the expense report and that is refreshing this pivot table so we'll use option 21 and uh, let it update the uh, update the report um, once we like the report option 22 will just simply print this information out to your printer but let's go ahead and, and uh, do option 21 okay um, and now what it did is it added a couple rows for the new category as well as a subcategory and we'll see that $125 for the tables table and chair we sold shows up here in April and uh, likewise the Christian education expense for the Sunday school was added automatically then uh, to the expense side of it and as I said option 22 if you want to do it uh, would print would print um, this as a oops, sorry didn't mean to move that just wanted to highlight this is what it will print then um, to your printer as as your um, as your your report showing the income and the expenses so um, and again as I said as you continue to add data this will continue to grow um, adding um, May June July etc through the end of the year it'll just grow automatically and that's what we'll print when you use option 22 okay um, that's what I wanted to show you if you're interested in getting a copy of this you'll see my email address in the description below just send me an email message and I'll be happy to to share the software with you